What up, YouTube? This is Twiggy, and this is our first episode of Tech with Twiggy. And on that first episode, we're actually going to talk about how Twiget and I stream on Twitch, which if you want, you can check us out every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday at 6 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. Um, we actually stream a little bit different than a lot of people. We actually don't use a capture card for PC to PC. Um, but I'm going to roll the intro, and we'll get right into it. Welcome back guys, so instead of just being a talking head, it's going to be more of actually my machine. Um, but a few things before we actually get into it, anything that I talk about today, um, plugins, products, if we talk about any, will actually all be down in the description below. Um, so just a quick overview of how we actually stream. So most of our content is done on two PCs, so I have the main PC, which is my PC, that is doing most of the gaming, and then on Twiget's PC is the stream PC, and that's actually the PC that handles everything that's being pushed out to Twitch. Um, so the way we actually record and capture the content on my PC onto her PC is actually not using a capture card, which a lot of people use. Um, we've used one in the past. There's just a lot of problems that we've that we've ran into it. I use an ultra wide monitor. You know, capture cards don't usually play well with ultra wide. So there's just a lot of just things that we wanted to get away from in the capture card realm. That's why we went this route. And that's actually using a, a technology and a platform called NDI, which stands for Network Device Interface. Um, it's created by a company called NewTek. So what this does is it actually allows um, one source uh, a video source to be playing the video content um, actually really anything that you put on the computer can actually then be transcoded and pushed through the network so there is a few things that you need um, to make this happen that's of course you need the ndi plugin which we'll go over here in a second um, but a big thing that a lot of people would also need that they maybe not have right now is at least a one gig internet backhaul it doesn't mean you need one gig internet connection. That means your internal local area network actually needs to be able to handle one gig. The reason for that is because since you are pushing out a lot of bit rate for the video and audio and all your sources in OBS through your network, you want to make sure that you have a big enough pipe in your own local area network that you can actually handle that bandwidth going from PC to PC. Um, and of course, like I said, you will we'll need the NDI plugin, which we'll actually pull up here in a second. Um, but let's just go over a few things of why you'd actually want to do this. Why would you want to use NDI over a, a capture card? Um, one thing is, like I stated before, is I use an ultra-wide setup, and a lot of the cards or the network, or not the network, I'm sorry, the uh, physical capture cards that you use, you have an output that you can you know, go up to 4K, but it actually doesn't support like your ultra-wide settings. So if you were using an ultra-wide monitor, you could only capture in 1080p, and then on your, your ultra-wide, it would all be stretched out because you'd actually be playing in 1080p as well. Um, the other thing is maybe you have a secondary PC just sitting around, and you want all your resources that you have on your main PC to go to gaming. Maybe your gaming PC isn't you know the best of the best, so you want to take some resources off of that PC and offload those resources onto another PC for all your streaming needs. That's a... The, the dual PC setup is very common in the Twitch and YouTube streaming universe. And that's honestly because the amount of processing power it takes to encode a video stream and push it out to Twitch is actually pretty taxing on the CPU. So if you're not, you know, running the latest and greatest hardware, it, it can be difficult to actually stream and play at the same time. And then again, that last reason is because capture cards are just wonky. We've had Elgato's, I've had Aver Media's, I've had off-branded ones and all of them at some point down the road they they end up having some sort of negative effect that you know this this method actually alleviates so let's get, jump right into it so i have obs open here as you can see um but before we actually open this up we would actually we would, we would want to grab this ndi plugin for obs so this will be again this is going to be linked in the description below 
but on here um, if you scroll down there's a Windows installer so you just hit that install the pro and the plugin so it says just you of course you need both of these it says required so don't don't not click that go ahead and hit install I'm not gonna hit install since I already have it and basically that's honestly it when you've done that on both PCs again you need this on the gaming PC and the other PC that you're gonna be streaming with because you need the platform on both on your gaming PC, which is what we're sitting at now, um, to to give you a basic overview of what this is. So I have all of these sources in my OBS on my gaming machine, right? So I have my alerts, my merch alert. Um, we do actually have a capture card for the Nintendo Switch, which I'll go over that in another video. It's actually just a off-branded one that actually works really well. Um, I have a couple captures. Um, I have our Discord chat when we're playing with friends. So all of this is actually on my gaming PC. So what happens is my OBS is taking all of this and then it's actually outputting. So if you hit tools at the top and then go to NDI output settings, as you can see, I'm outputting right now and you can name it whatever you want, but I just name it OBS. I'm outputting this over the network, which I'll show you real, real quick. So as you can see, this is what it's picking up and it's actually sending all of that data and all these sources and all the audio and everything over to Twigget's PC, which is our stream PC. So, we, as you can see down here, because I have the stats pulled up, even though right now I am streaming my desktop to hers, I'm only using 0.29.4% of my CPU, which is insane when you think about like how, how much OBS usually takes up. Usually when you have OBS encoding, you know, it's around the 78-80% usage because it's just taking so much taxation away from your, from your processor. But as you can see here, this is where it's important to, to note that you want a pretty large infrastructure with your with your network because all of the data is going through the Ethernet to her computer. So as you can see, I'm right now I'm at 31 um, megabytes a second. So that's where I was saying if you want to use this, you want to make sure that your network can handle it. Not your internet. When I say network, I mean you're just you're between your devices. So if you have a you know, a Cat5 cable that can handle a gig going into a gig Ethernet switch that's then going into your other PC, that's going to be plenty of speed to handle that. So, honestly, that's that's 100% it. So, as you can see, it's it's very simple. Once you install that plugin, you just go to Tools, NDI Output, and you just hit, yes, I want to output this. And then anything that I do on my OBS is actually going to be transferred over to her computer through an NDI source. So instead of going to that PC, I'm just gonna show you what it looks like. So if we're pretending that this one is on her PC, she would hit new NDI source, and then she would, you know, name whatever she wants. She could name it, you know, Twiggy's PC, whatever. And then she would then find the source on the internet, which of course is mine, because as you can see, Luke PC OBS. Bandwidth, she's gonna set it the highest because that's we we have a 10 gig internet bad call, so we're fine on um, our background and then every honestly everything else just hit okay and then if I enable this again you can see now there's double because you can see that this is the output that we're capturing but then basically what she can do is she can take that and then she can then set up her OBS to you know she can put in the string key and all that all that jazz into twitch and all of her PC is handling all the encoding so my PC is getting the alerts so I get notified when you know somebody follows or sends us a donation or whatever. I get the don I get the alert as well as her because she's also picking up what my computer is doing. So it's just a really easy, nice, free way. If you have another PC sitting around, honestly, if you have just even a an older PC just sitting there and you stream and you want to use your gaming PC to its fullest, honestly, get that secondary PC out. Use this method, and you can really you know, free up a lot of resources on your on your main rig. So that's our quick overview of what of how we stream. Again, you can check us out every Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday at 6 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. Um, if you have any questions or comments or anything like you want any help, you can always comment below. You can join us on Twitch when we're live, or you can actually join the Discord, which again will be listed in the description. Um, I do have a channel on there for tech requests or tech help, and I'd be more than happy to help you. All right, we will catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching.